Well, good afternoon, everyone. How are you? Good. Good lunch? Good. I, I'm delighted to be here, and uh, I want to thank uh, Tim uh, Lorden for the work that he does uh, for the Internet Education Foundation and his leadership in guiding uh, the Congressional Internet Caucus uh, Advisory Committee. He does, uh, does an outstanding job, uh, along with the co-chairs, uh, both in the Senate uh, and in the House. I'm very proud to uh, uh, be the, um, uh, one of the co-chairs, along with uh, uh, my wonderful colleague, uh, Bob uh, uh, Goodlot. Um, I often tease him and say that he, uh, he loves to spend more time in my district than maybe even his own. So uh, it is a wonderful place and a very distinguished place uh, in our country. So uh, thank you for inviting me here today. And as I said, I'm, I'm very, very pleased to be part of uh, the Internet Caucus and co-chair it and um, uh, one of the uh, original co-founders of it. Uh, we all miss uh, Rick Boucher in the House. Uh, there are very few uh, that uh, uh, had uh, uh, that possessed the uh, the understanding, a very broad and deep understanding of telecommunications issues, uh, internet issues, and uh, uh, so they are big shoes to fill uh, in terms of being the uh, the ranking member at that committee, uh, which um, which I love. I've been on the uh, uh, communication and internet subcommittee. Uh, since uh, first going to Energy and Commerce, as uh, uh, Tim said, in 1995. Uh, I just returned from um, uh, a congressional uh, delegation to the Middle East. Um, and whenever you travel outside of our country, I think that uh, one can't help but reflect on what American leadership is all about and how uh, others view us uh, how essential American leadership is, uh, that everything we do, everything that we build, everything that we create um, is looked up to and is uh, 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 sought to be replicated in other parts of the world. So it's, it really is what our work um, has to reflect is American leadership. There's no question about that, but you uh, have, uh, I think, a renewal uh, of appreciation of what that leadership is about and what it means to the rest of the world and, and our place on the world stage. Uh, it's the genius, it's the innovation, uh, it's the creativity uh, that over decades and uh, more than two centuries that have really established America uh, as a true leader in the world. And now American leadership and innovation is driving the ever-expanding use of wireless broadband. And with it, thousands of jobs being created uh, across our country. Uh, I'm very, very proud to represent uh, Silicon Valley in the Congress. It is the innovation hub of our nation. And platform providers like Apple and uh, Google and HP are empowering new startups, empowering new startups. And that with that comes, obviously, American jobs, American creativity, American renewal, uh, so to speak, enabling developers uh, to create and market their mobile applications to millions of users around the world. Much of the conversation in Congress uh, with legitimacy is focused on spectrum, and rightfully so. The president has uh, uh, set a very ambitious goal of freeing up 500 megahertz of uh, spectrum for wireless broadband over the next 10 years. There is no question that there is an insatiable appetite uh, for not only spectrum, uh, but with it, everything going uh, to wireless. And so this is a very, very important conversation and very important decision that we're going to be making at the committee. But I think our conversation has to go beyond just the need for more spectrum. What are the applications that will use this spectrum? And how can Congress promote policies that will enable uh, these new businesses to thrive and to create even more jobs in our nation? One such area is the mobile apps market which to date 
has experienced stunning, I mean, it's really stunning growth. I think I'm preaching to the choir, uh, but it is more than worth mentioning. Just three years ago, Apple's uh, App Store contained only 500 uh, third-party apps. Today, there are over 350,000. That's why I said it's stunning. The vast majority of these apps are developed by small businesses. And uh, every week, and I've commuted across the country every week now for 18 and a half years, uh, I visit uh, the small companies, some of them uh, actually in garages. Uh, I was in one recently that, um, uh, where it was a plumbing business, a family plumbing business for over 100 years, and now uh, it is a, um, uh, uh, one of these new small startups. It's very, very exciting. So why should Congress care? This growth has important economic and social implications. Over the next three years, the Association for Competitive Technology, ACT, estimates that the uh, mobile apps economy will create, save, or supplement 600,000 U.S. jobs. Um, that is very, very good news. That is very good news, but we need to help to make that a reality. I'm very proud of what my district is accomplishing, and this growth um, uh, is important and it'll continue to occur across the country. In fact, 70% of the top 500 uh, mobile apps today are developed outside of California, uh, from Birmingham, Alabama, to Spring Hope, uh, North uh, Carolina. Uh, this is happening, and uh, this is very, very good and important news for our country. One organization, and I think this is uh, uh, fairly fascinating, and interesting. One organization that's helping to drive this growth is Moms with Apps. It's based in my district, and uh, Moms with Apps has brought together more than 400 developers from around the world who are focused on building apps for kids and families. So the sky's the limit. Uh, uh, what is uh, one individual's imagination today uh, is someone's app for tomorrow. Uh, these apps uh, inform, they entertain, and they make lives uh, easier every day or make lives more interesting every day. <laughs> no longer are mobile devices just a means for accessing email and basic news on the go. They now allow us to stream uh, movies, play online games, participate in video conferences, and much more. Uh, with the growth of these third-party developed uh, applications comes a responsibility to protect the privacy of users. I recently held a town hall meeting in Palo Alto uh, to discuss these issues, and there was a, uh, a marvelous turnout of both adults slash parents and young people. And each had their own view and their own take on this, but privacy, as I've often said, I think is in the DNA of the American people. We don't want the government to know or looking over our shoulders. What's personal is personal. And uh, so there are some lines to be drawn on this, and I think that privacy uh, and the responsibility to protect the privacy of users is a very important um, uh, issue. Uh, today, information is shared more freely and quickly than ever before, especially by younger, by the younger generation. And I think that the younger generation has a different view on privacy than uh, those of us that uh, are older. But nonetheless, privacy is still important. Uh, the private sector has a very important part to play in this, I believe, uh, in developing new technologies which uh, can protect uh, consumer privacy on the internet. And I think there's a role in the public sector to ensure that, uh, the, that users' public information is safe from misuse and abuse. Uh, no one wants to have this hijacked and not know where it's going or who is going to be able to make use of it. So transparency is a critical element of this discussion. Consumers should know what information is being collected how it's being used, and who has access to that data. Uh, but I think that we need to, on the public side, to uh, strike a very delicate balance here. Uh, because I believe that we can protect privacy 
without inhibiting job creation and the development of new innovative data-driven apps and services. Uh, we don't want to stifle innovation in the name of privacy. So uh, I think that it's a set of very important bookends and a delicate balance that uh, Congress is, need, is going to need to strike. So as we look to the future, we need to ensure that these emerging businesses have the ingredients to succeed. Our investment in more spectrum for wireless broadband with carefully balanced privacy rules, I think, will facilitate the creation of new jobs and drive the success of companies as we enter the second decade of the 21st century. I think we don't um, realize that uh, this much time has already passed. Uh, we were busy celebrating the, uh, uh, the beginning of the 21st century. We're now beginning the second decade of the 21st century. So um, I have no doubt uh, that the leaders in my district uh, will help to uh, shape uh, new success stories, uh, not only uh, in this uh, second decade of the 21st century, but for the remainder of it. Uh, I think the challenge to those of us in Congress is to keep up with that, is to keep up with that and make sure that there aren't any weeds in the way uh, of these achievements uh, one of the most exciting things for me being a part of the subcommittee is that this is such an important sector of our national economy and that what we do uh, can really enhance it. Uh, so I look forward to the work. Um, I'm not necessarily looking forward to the 11 or 21 amendments that are coming up on the House floor. Uh, I'll stop here and maybe take a couple of questions, and then I'm going to have to get back over to the House side. Do we have time or not? We don't have time. Well, thank you for inviting me. I hope uh, that, that, that was quick. Thank you for inviting me, and thank you for what you do. And I look forward to, uh, uh, to working with you. And uh, Tim, thank you again for your extraordinary leadership uh, of the caucus. Um, we're very, very grateful to you for what you do day in and day out. You make it look easy, uh, but I know that there's a great deal of work that goes into it. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.